All right, so in order to get to where we are right now, we've learned about a number of bootstrap components. For example, the navigation bar, the bootstrap buttons, bootstrap containers, grids, and the responsiveness that we get using bootstrap for layout purposes. Now, before we carry on, I want to add some more CSS code. So normal boggled standard CSS so that we can customize all of our bootstrap components and make our title page look a little bit more like our design on Balsamic. So let's get started. Now, the first thing that you may or may not have noticed, there are some different fonts going on here. The nav bar uses the bootstrap default font, as does the nav bar brand, as does the text in our buttons, and also, of course, the rest of our unstyled web page. Now, instead of going into the button and going into the nav bar and adding CSS to each of them, changing the font, I want you to think if you can figure out a way of changing all of the text to the Montserrat font that we got from Google Fonts. So pause the video and see if you can complete this mini challenge. All right, so this shouldn't be too hard because we've done it before. Now, what is the one thing that encompasses all of our content for our website? Well, it's the body element because all the content is embedded inside it. And we can simply define a global font for the body in order to apply it to all the text on screen. So I'm going to target the body element and I'm going to, and I'm going to change the font family to Montserrat and I'm going to close it off with a semicolon. So let's hit save and let's go back and refresh. You can see that all the text now has changed to our chosen font, which makes it look a little bit more unified and gets us closer to our final design. So the next thing that I want to change is I want this title uh, text to have a white color so that it matches with the color palette that we've got going on here, which is this kind of red and white kind of scheme for our imaginary tin dog product. So one way of doing this is going into the H1 that we've already selected here and adding a color property and setting it to white. Now, the other way of doing this is adding it to the title section, which if you remember, the H1 is residing inside. So this line is inside our title section. And by changing the color of all text in the title section, if later on I decide to add a subtitle or, you know, uh, a little bit of explainer text or whatever it may be, it will still keep to our current color scheme. So it's a little bit more encompassing. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add our color property and I'm going to set it to white. So as a shorthand, remember that the color hex codes for pound sign FFF is always going to be white and pound sign 000 is always going to be black. And you can see our pigments add on showing you that. So I want white. Let's hit save and let's refresh. You can see we've now got our white big title, which looks brilliant. Now, don't worry if you added your color to the H1, it's perfectly valid and we can always refactor our code later on if we see we're duplicating any part or, you know, if we want to make our code more succinct. So that's completely acceptable and it's not wrong at all. So now that we've styled the text on our page, the next thing I want to look at is this nav bar because you can see that the text is a little bit too small and this brand should really be a little bit more prominent and also i want to make it look a little bit more like the tinder logo because we are making a copycat uh, product here after all and the closest logo that i found on Google Fonts was the Ubuntu font, which we already incorporated when we embedded our Google Fonts into our website. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, before I do that, I want to add a new section and I'm going to say navigation bar and I'm going to use that good old trick of highlighting it and command forward slash to style it. 
I find this much easier than typing a bunch of asterisks and forward slashes. Now here we're going to first target our nav brand. So nav bar dash brand and and I want to change the font family to Ubuntu. So font family and that's going to be Ubuntu. Now let's hit save and refresh. And you can see that that T looks a lot like the T for Tinder now, but it's still too small. So let's increase the font size as well to 2.5 REM. And maybe while we're here, we can make the font weight uh, to bold as well. Hit save and refresh. And you can see that now we've got this big nav bar brand, which looks a lot better and it makes us seem like we're more proud of what we're called rather than as if we're trying to hide it with our tiny text. Now with the bigger font size for the navbar brand you start to notice that it's a little bit awkward having it so close to our title text and image so ideally I would like to push down any content and have a bit of padding at the bottom of our navbar because it would make it look a lot nicer. So I don't really want to add any padding to the top or the left and right. So can you think of a way in which we can set the bottom padding to 4.5 REM without touching the padding on any other side of the nav bar? So again, mini challenge, pause the video if you want to complete it. All right, so I'm going to put this just above our navbar brand because it's uh, more broad and um, it targets the navbar instead of any component inside the navbar. So it's a higher level div. So I tend to add my selectors in um, that kind of order, going from less specific to more specific as you scroll down. Um, and also I try to keep the CSS styling roughly in the order that you see on the page. So the title section will go first, then the next section, then the next section. It just makes it a little bit easier to change and to fix later on. Now in the nav bar, we want to change the padding and we only want to touch the padding bottom and we want to set it to 2.5 and we want to set it to 4.5 REM. Hit save and refresh. And now we've got a little bit more space in between that nav bar and the title text and images. And it makes the whole website look a lot less bunched up and a lot more designed, if you will. Now, the next thing we should address in the nav bar are these nav items. They need a bit more space um, between each other. So I'm again going to add some padding. I will keep this as a fixed size just because we've got that responsiveness. So I don't really need it as a percentage or as a REM. So I'm going to put in probably 18 pixels of padding um, left and right of each of these nav items. So. We're going to go below the navbar brand. We're going to target the nav item and we're going to say padding uh, zero top and bottom and then about 18 pixels left and right. Hit save, refresh, bit more spaced out. Looks a lot nicer. We won't accidentally press on the wrong button, but they still need to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to dig even deeper inside the nav item, I'm going to target the actual nav link to style it. So we're going to target the nav link. So in this case, I'm going to change the font size, the font family, as well as the color so that we get a little bit more like this. So a little bit larger. And I'm also going to change the font weight to um, the Montserrat light font. Um, so it's not so prominent on the page. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's change the nav links font size. You can change it to maybe about 1.2 REM. You can see it's just a little bit bigger, but it's a little bit too heavy in terms of weight at the moment. So let's change the font family to um, Montserrat dash light. And this will thin those letters down and make it less prominent and blend in a bit better. Now let's take a look at how our navbar looks by activating pesticide. 
And you can see that this is the entire section, this blue section. Um, and you can see that we've still got a bit of padding, it seems, left over from the top, the left and the right of our nav bar, which is why that text is not aligning on the left with our uh, title text here. So that is a, just a little bit off. And I suspect the reason is if we inspect on this is that the nav bar actually has some padding in addition to the padding bottom that we added. So let's try and get rid of this padding, which came from probably the bootstrap element. And we can do that by instead of using padding bottom to add padding and then add zero um, to the top, zero to the left and right, and 4.5 REM to the bottom only. So now if we refresh, you can see that our nav bar brand now aligns perfectly with our title text and our buttons. And when you're designing websites or apps or whatever it may be, try to minimize on the number of lines that you can align things to because it will usually make your designs look more together. So now I'm pretty happy with my nav bar. So the next thing I'm going to deal with are these buttons. They're far too close to this title text and, and they need a little bit of a margin to push it away from that text. So let's go into our CSS and add another section. Let's call it uh, buttons, uh, maybe more specifically the download buttons. And let's comment that out so that we have our new section. Now, in order to target the button, I have a choice of either using the Bootstrap BTN class and uh, customize the Bootstrap style, or I can add in my custom class. Now, in this situation, if you start getting lazy and using the existing classes from Bootstrap, you often find yourself in a situation later on when you want to use this button, but you don't want it to have the same amount of margin as you do in the title section. So usually it's much better to just add in a custom class, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to call this our download button and I'm going to apply that class to our Google Play button as well. So let's hit save. And now we can target it over here. And our download button needs a margin that is, I've sort of been tweaking around with it. And the one that I find to work the best is about 5% um, on the top, 3% uh, on the right, 5% on the left and zero on the bottom. So let's hit save and refresh. And you can see that that provides a large enough distance between the two buttons to make it take up um, roughly the amount of space that we've got for our title. And, and it makes our button aligned perfectly with the uh, nav bar brand as well as the title text. So that's what I quite liked when I was messing around with these numbers. But of course, feel free to um, play around with it yourself. So it's usually easiest if you just inspect on it and then just go into the box model and, and try changing some of these numbers and see what it ends up being for the design that you want. All right, so the very last thing I wanna change is this image. That's all that we have left in our title section. And firstly, I wanna make its width a little bit smaller because at the moment, it's kind of taking up as much width as it can. It's like full size right now. And I want it to be maybe 60% of its parent. So this is its parent, which is the containing div, which is our column large six um, on desktop and column and 12 and a full width on uh, iPad or mobile. But I want it to take up only maybe 60% of this width to make it a little bit narrower. So let's go and do that. So again, I'm gonna add a new section. This is called title image. And let's add a comment there and let's find out what class we need to use to target that image. And you can see at the moment our image is devoid of all classes. So let's go ahead and add that. And I'm going to call the class maybe title image and we can hit save. Now here I can use that class called title image 
and we can make its width only 60% of what it used to be. Hit save, refresh, you can see it's now a little bit smaller and less sort of assuming and less in your face, which makes a much better design, I think. Right, so the last and final thing that you might have been struggling to figure out is how do we get it to be rotated um, to the right? And this is the part where I said to you that you might need to search for it on Google. So as I've been saying, a lot of times getting good at development or programming is very often getting good at Google and knowing the right things to search for in order to get your answer. So in our case, we want to rotate um, an image um, using CSS. And let's see what we get with this search query. So we are getting some results from W3 schools as well as MDN. And they seem to point towards something about transform, something about rotation. So I tend to prefer the MDN docs. So let's just take a look at what they talk about. And you can see that there is a CSS function called rotation. Now we haven't really spoken much about functions but we will do in the next section when we cover JavaScript. But for now, let's just see what we can do uh, using this rotate function. So they've got a very simple bit of CSS code here where they're changing a transform property um, by using the rotate function and then you specify the degree, the amount that you want to rotate your element by. And you can see in this case, the pink one, which is what this targets, is rotated 45 degrees to the right. So let's just open this in CodePen and have a mess around with it to fully understand what is happening. So let's take a look at the CSS section. So we've got this div, which is normal, which nothing really changed about it. Um, and then we've got this div called rotated um, with the class of rotated, which is what we are editing here. And what we've changed is the transform property using the rotate function, and we're specifying 45 degrees. So when it's positive, it rotates by 45 degrees to the right. If it's negative, it rotates by 45 degrees to the left, or rather anti-clockwise. And as you expect, 90 degrees is 90 degrees right rotation, 180 degrees is 180 degrees clockwise rotation. So this seems pretty simple and we can probably figure out how we can use this to achieve what we want, which is something like this. So let's go into our CSS and we're again targeting the title image in this case. And we're going to use what we just learned, which is changing the transform property to use the rotate function. And we're going to specify how much we are going to rotate by. Now with repeat sort of experimentation, changing this number a few times, I found that 25 degrees tends to work quite well. So if you add 25 degrees in the positive and you refresh, you can see that we've now got that lovely right-sided rotation. So we are almost done here. The last thing that I want to do is just do a final sort of sense check, um, looking at this layout and seeing if we're happy with how it looks. And the one last thing that's a little bit niggling for me is that this title is kind of competing with this navbar brand. And whenever you're designing websites, um, you want to think about what is the first thing that you want the user to look at. You want to establish some sort of visual hierarchy. And you can do that using size, or you can do that using weight, um, so font weight, or you can do that using uh, highlighting or, or outlining, a whole bunch of things, basically. And in this case, even though this one has a much higher font weight, than the navbar brand, it's kind of competing with it because it's about the same size. So let's just increase the title text size just by a smidge and I'll show you the difference. So let's go ahead and change that font size from 3 REM to maybe say 3.5 REM. And let me show you what happens when I refresh. You can see now on this website, it's pretty obvious that the biggest, boldest thing is this heading here. 
And it's pretty much guaranteed that if you get a user to load up this website, the first thing that their eyes will be drawn to is this biggest, boldest title. And that's exactly what we want. We want them to immediately know what our product is about. And then the second most important thing should be maybe the download button, which are highlighted and outlined for them to start taking action. And then maybe the third most important thing is for them to know what our company is um, and what other things they can explore over here. So now that we've more or less finished styling our title section of our page, in the next lesson, we're going to move further down and continue with the other sections. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.